we're going to start off with um, uh, Sophie and Florian talking about research squirrel engineers, and I believe Sophie's going to speak first. So I will um, close my uh, screen share and um, hand over to Sophie. Can you all see this now? The title slide. I hope so, because I can see it. Yep, so thank yep, you very fine. much. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for inviting us for this talk. Um, Florian and I would talk, I would like to talk about the research squirrel engineers, which is an independent risk squirrel network um, for research software engineers between digital humanities and archaeology. So people who write code for research are few and far between in the archaeological sciences. And quite often they are regarded as technicians and their function in research projects is redu reduced to yeah, those of helpers, which diminishes their contribution to the success of the undertaking. And we all know that um, the temporary nature of research related projects is um, leads to a very unstable job market in research, research software engineering. And um, so we have a situation of underappreciation and instability of the job market, a more or less increased workload for research software engineers and um, some other points as well, which we will not delve into here too much, but um, which were listed in Jeremy Huggett's um, article, Resilient Scholarship in the Digital Age, uh, which was, was published in 2019, I think. And um, he says, we need a resilient scholarship that can deal with all these kind of problems we have in, in this uh, digital development in research software in engineering and in, in research altogether. And one point he's talking about, which is very important on the um, individual level, is that you can form communities for networking and support, which will help you to deal with all these stress factors. And this is what we want to talk about here. This is what the research squirrel engineers are. So the idea for this network of researchers was created on a conference uh, in Krakow uh, in 2019. And there a group of people came together, um, at least the first two or three, um, who wanted to form a network that is interested in open science, that's interested in linked data, and would like to yeah, develop projects on that, but not be like a strict uh, project with some kind of funding agency or something, but just yeah, a group of people working together and supporting each other. And so far we are um, a network of four people and we've got a background in, in research software engineering and geoinformatics and, cu and in cultural heritage. So who are we? Um, I'm going from right to left, so I stop with me. <laughs> um, on the right hand side, we've got Timo. Timo Homburg is uh, into geoinformatics and semantics and is uh, currently working on a PhD in this area. Um, there's Florian Thierry, who's here with me and will continue talking later on. Uh, he studied, studied geodesy and is now a research software engineer at the Römisch Germanische Zentralmuseum in Mainz which is a quite important archaeological research institute in Germany, like one of the most important ones. And um, then there is Martina Trognitz. She is um, one of the most, I guess, um, well-known people in research data management in archaeology. Maybe, I mean, she's not one of the higher ranking ones, of course, but uh, she worked a lot there and she's, um, she's really good uh, in these topics and actually studied computer linguistics and archaeology. And there's me. I'm a digital archaeologist, um, actually prehistorian by training, and um, I focus on statistics mostly. We are an open network. We are very happy to cooperate with whoever comes along. And we've um, done several projects just with us and with other people as well. And we, we're interested in implementing um, anything regarding linked open data and semantic web projects. And um, we're just not affiliated with anyone who gives us funding, but sometimes we manage to get funding for some small projects. So here are some um, groups with who we already cooperated and, or at least who, who where, where we are members. And 
um, that just give us great opportunities to to get to know people and to yeah um, learn from people. So there's of course the research software engineering community, the German one, the one of the digital humanities um, conference. There are the uh, computer applications in archaeology and quantitative methods, um, which is an international group and also like, has uh, national chapters. So we've um, have corporations there with the German national chapter and with the British national chapter. Um, we also um, are invested in special interest groups in the CAA, uh, one on linked open data and one on scientific scripting languages, and the Little Minions group, which is more or less very research software engineering focused because the little minions are the little helpers that um, you, you program for yourselves. Um, then there's the initiative for statistical analysis. So that's uh, like a bit more my area and uh, the linked pasts, um, which is a interest, in, important and interesting working group. And for the Wikimedia Germany, um, we've been and are, so some of us been, some still are fellow um, fellows in the fellow program free knowledge so um, we are invested in the in the wikimedia and wikipedia and wikidata universe as well and this is always uh, great for us to just to get to know people and to to learn more about different kind of technologies and um, form projects and yeah little working groups so two working groups um, that we um, developed to work on um, uh, two different projects are the Sparkling Unicorn Fugus plugin and the Linked Open Organ Data project. And now Flo will continue talking about these projects. Uh, yeah, th uh, thank you, Sophie. Um, yeah, we'll take over, and Sophie will be my enter woman right now. So, one of our projects we have done is the Sparkling Unicorn Qubis plugin, and it's a linked data access point for Qubis. And it's, yeah, it's available on, uh, on GitHub. Just uh, check it out. And it's also downloadable if you use Qubis, for example, uh, as an experimental plugin. So, it's right now official, now in a version, I think, 012. So, next slide, please. And what, uh, what does this kind of uh, Sparkling Unicorn? So the Sparkling Unicorn Hucus plugin allows the execution of linked data queries in Sparkle or GeoSparkle to a set of triple stores or geo-enabled Sparkle endpoints and just uh, prepares the results uh, of the queries in QGIS for the geo community or the archaeological community or whatever. So it's the first um, yeah, point where the semantic web community comes together with the QGIS community. So it's really cool. Next slide, please. And one example for, uh, is here shown. Uh, so uh, we have some Wikida Wikidata caves with prehistoric art, where we just uh, uh, yeah, sparkle, uh, sparkles Wiki, uh, Wikidata, which can just map it uh, and do some further analysis. Next slide, please. And then we have a big one. So it's the, we called it the uh, OG OWN project where we want to share linked open data with uh, OWN data, uh, especially from Ireland in this case. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, one part of this is that we want to put data into Wikidata and uh, we call that the Wikidata OWN workflow. And for this, we extract information on ohm stones, uh, for example, uh, tone lands, materials, dimensions, and inscriptions from already from normal books. Uh, link this information to uh, existing information, uh, for example, in uh, these geospatial er area in OpenStreetMap. Input that data into Wikidata and link to existing data sets and extract that data, for example, with the Sparkle Unicorn to do some further analysis with open source software. Next slide, please. And then you can do yeah, some uh, geospatial or statistical analysis, as you can see here. Next slide. And we do also more activities also with non-Squirrel members, uh, so a good friend of us. One, uh, one of them is here, it's Hubert Mara, for example. So next slide. Uh, yeah. Uh, so um, for instance, we uh, wrote a uh, paper, this is, uh, some recommendations for the review of archaeological research software uh, in an uh, archaeological journal in Germany. This is uh, right now 
just available in German, but uh, we wrote also an English version. And I think in the end of uh, this month, there will be also an, an English version. And you may check it out and give us some feedback. It would be really, really cool. Um, because, yeah, I think it's a really, really important topic. Next slide. And uh, on the end, we, uh, as uh, Sophie um, just uh, said before, sometimes we get some funding for our projects. And uh, this, uh, this was inside the Wikimedia uh, Fellow Program, um, which is a really cool program from the uh, German Wikimedia Foundation. And one of my projects is uh, the own project, so I can do something with my Irish own stones. Next slide. Um, Sophie also does something with uh, archaeological sources and smash dishes. And next slide, in the pa um, past years, Martina was, uh, has also get been funded and does something with um, a link to open bibliography uh, for Egan, Clyptic, and Bronze Age. Uh, next slide. So yeah, that's us that are uh, research through all engineers. And if you want to be and research squirrel, and you are interested in linked data, semantic technologies, whatever, or just want to have some nice um, contacts around the world, we are just open and just join us and uh, write us an email or whatever. So uh, perfect. And thank you. If you have any questions, just ask us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you both very much indeed. That was perfect timing as well. Um, I, so I don't know if, if people have questions, please feel free to put them into the um, into the chat. So I have, I have a question uh, while we're waiting if anybody else has got uh, any questions. So I think it's really interesting to see the, the skill set that you have as a team, which is clearly very uh, important for the digital humanities community. Um, but I can see also these skills are clearly very valuable in the much wider research community. What, what other domains have you or do you see there being lots of scope to work in with these kind of skills? I mean, are you working with other areas or is it mostly digital humanities focused at the moment? Well, at the moment, it's quite DH and digital archaeology focused um, because that's just the areas we work in. Like, I'm an archaeologist, Martina is more an archaeologist and the others are employed at archaeological institutions. So uh, that's just the area, but it doesn't need to stay in that area. And um, actually, archaeology is quite an interdisciplinary field. So um, we, we need da data from biologists, geologists, um, from genetic, like people who do genetic analysis and stuff. So we are very happy to broaden our perspective, really. Um, it just hasn't come up so far. So whenever um, someone wants to join us, we're very happy to. OK, thank you. So there's a question here in the chat. Um, do, do you mostly find things to work on yourselves, or have you had many people or organizations approach you? At the moment, uh, it's us having ideas and just doing them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in some um, uh, yeah, uh, in some projects, for example, in the uh, own project, um, I got in touch with uh, the mindset, which is the mind center of digital, uh, yeah, digital humanities. You will call it in minds, um, and yeah, and I try to, um, yeah, get in contact with them. And they, for uh, for instance, uh, host my triple store and all the infrastructure stuff. So it's it's a really cool thing. But yeah, you have to say that um, yeah. So my um, my my advisor from my master thesis uh, is the boss of this institute. So it, it, yeah, it's quite a thing of personal uh, relations. So but but that's what are the research uh, yeah research scrolls and the whole source network is about. So it's all about connections and yeah, and to yeah bring this network into yeah into yeah into a life in the RSE world so it's yeah but m mostly we are um yeah working on our own and we don't want to be really um totally part um of an institute because uh, if we do that we have the problems that uh, um Sophie showed in the first slides so. okay thank you um 
there's a couple couple more questions so, so one question here um one point that's made is can you can you add contact info for people who want to join you so i guess that's something we can make available um after the talk we can send a follow-up um or we can put information on the on the source page um but but obviously equally feel free to point people i think you had something on your slides but do feel free to, to point people on your response to that to the to the right location who to contact um and and then there's actually a question here um do you see any barriers between digital archaeology and digital humanities there are papers on that <laughs> um i don't think there are barriers per se it's just that the two fields kind of develop next to each other because the age is quite focused on textual analysis and archaeology like prehistoric archaeology at least what what i do just uh, doesn't have any textual sources so they kind of develop next to each other each doing their stuff but there are a lot of possibilities to interact so i've, I've got a paper with a friend where we did some textual analysis on archaeological papers for example and of course, um, the age is becoming more and more um, interested in spatial relations as well, which is an area in which archaeology, digital archaeology has a lot of expertise. So I don't think there should be a divide. It's just kind of, um, it, it, it de developed in that way, but I think there is more and more overlap and there should be more and more overlap and we should learn from each other, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.